Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Coach YouTube channel. In today's session, we'll be discussing one of the most dominating IDEs for Python, the PyCharm. But before we begin, if you're interested in staying updated with the latest tech content, consider getting subscribed to our channel and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Code. Without any further ado, let's get started. Over to our training experts. Today we're going to be working with PyCharm, the Python IDE or user interface for professional developers in the Python scripting language. For myself, I like PyCharm because it separates your different environments and if you're working in say Python 3.6 and you need to do code in 3.5, you can easily create those different environments in the PyCharm setup. It also has a number of wonderful tools to help you do your different projects and to help you with your coding. We'll start from their website, www.jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. JetBrains is the company behind the PyCharm development, even though PyCharm is open source. On this page, you'll see if you come to their main page, and you can just do a search. If you search PyCharm, you'll find this as the top result. You'll see Download Now, and it says Full-Fledged Professional or Free Community Version. So if we go on the Download Now button, you'll see where you have the two choices. Unless you're doing a lot of sharing and web development where you're interfacing up into the web, you really don't need to pay for the professional version. If it's your first time in, start with the community version, and then as a company, if you need the professional version, you can upgrade. So we'll go down here where it says Community. We'll go ahead and click on the Download, and then open and run that just like you do any other install onto your computer. And once once you've installed it, you'll see this icon on your desktop, the PC for PyCharm icon. I have it in my quick start. I'll go ahead and click on that there and let it open up, and you'll see the PyCharm opening up in the community version, 2018.3. Now, it'll load up the last, whatever the last project you worked on uh, automatically, and then you can see here where it comes up and has tips, so you can go through some of the tips and see some of the cool tricks you can do. You should also notice on yours that the fonts and everything are a little bit smaller. I intentionally enlarge mine for doing the demos and tutorials. And you can easily position your workspace, which I'm working here in scratch3.py file. That just happens to be the last one I was doing. By default, name them Scratch whenever you start a new file, and you can, of course, rename them. And you will see on this page, there's three major, well, there's a number of major areas. They have on the left, you have tabs that you can go between, you know, turns on and off things here. Here's our project we're working on, so I can make it disappear if I don't want to have this page open. You'll see on the top, we have our standard file edit view navigate in your different toolbar pull downs your major icons in this case uh, if you hover over it of course it'll tell you that it has open save you can synchronize this with if you're working on larger projects and you have the professional version generally you won't use this unless you're in the professional version you also have like your back or undo you'll see here where I have scratch that's the one I'm working on this tells it what it's running so if I have multiple files I'm flipping between I can easily run the different ones or I can edit the configuration from here also. And then we just have our simple run button. You'll see if I hover over it, it also is Shift F10. We have a debug, it looks like a little bug, which is kind of cool. And we have our settings. And we usually start with the settings. We can get to settings here through the wrench. You can also go under file, and you'll see down here also settings. And when we go under settings, we have appearance. This is all your setup you'll want to get into. This is where I change the font so it's nice and large. You can see I'm using size 24 font. Normally, you only need it at 12 for most of your work. And there's a lot of other settings in here you can change as far as the look and feel of your um, project you're working on and your interface, how you want it to look at. Look. You can also adjust the appearance of your editor down here with your different fonts, color, style, setup, uh, what menus you want to show up. There's a lot here under the appearance and behavior that you can do, and also along with the editor. We'll come back to settings when we get into our own project, but for right now we're just going to look at the appearance and the editor, and you can change your fonts and everything in there. And we'll close out of that. Other things to note, courses are open if you're opening up a Python or folder. You can also save. If you go under File, there's the new Scratch file. That's how I come up with the new scratch file in our project. Your save over, you open recent. There's a lot of different things you can do in here. You can also export and import settings on whatever you're working on. We're going to start off by creating a new project. So the very top selection under file is new project. 
And when I click on there, you'll go ahead and give it a name. It has untitled, we'll call this PyCharm Tutorial. And we'll go ahead and create that. And it asks me, do I want this window, a new window, attach, or cancel? I'll go ahead and keep it in the same window. I could open up a whole new window and project in here, but I don't need to. I don't have anything in the other project that I'm working on, so I can just let this take over. And you'll see it takes about, oh, about a half a minute for it to go through the creating the virtual environment and flashing through all the different files is copying into our new project. And that's important because whatever I do in this project is separate from my other projects. That way if I have certain imports or certain modules I've added in, I can track what's being used with this project and then if we're going to deploy it, I'll be able to let the um, our admin on the server side or whatever is going be able to bundle those and deploy those. Now at this point, we want to get jumping on our programming and get started in writing our script for Python. And you can either go up here to our project folder and right click on that and if you go up to the top you'll see new and you get a lot of different options new scratch file new file directory python python file you can also get to this by going under file and you'll see new or you can use the alt insert any one of those will take you to the same window and again we want to select the python file since we're writing a python script and we'll go ahead and do a pycharm we'll just call this pycharm in the python file and I'll click ok on there so now i have an active window up in the middle you'll see my pycharm on the left underneath the project pycharm Charm tutorial. And I didn't mention it yet, but there's also Python console, terminal, and to do on the bottom. Let's go ahead and write some basic code. Let's go ahead and import math. So we'll do a little bit of math here. And from import math, we'll do x equals minus 0.75. And you'll see that as we're doing this, stuff highlights and appears. And so I can do print and it lets me know what the actual code is. And let's say I'm doing absolute value. I want the absolute value of x. You will see it appear there on the top and I can either hit the enter key or I can click on it and if I click on it it does absolute value and we'll type in X and it even shows me that X is on my list so there's X and now that we have all that let's go ahead and run the code and the first thing you notice is our run button is not highlighted and this thing says add configuration now I can click on here and add configuration and I can tell it what I want to run but I'm very lazy so we'll just go up to the run button across the top on the pull down you'll see run which is also Alt Shift F10. And if I click on this run, it'll ask me what I want to run. And I want to run my PyCharm. That's the name of the .py file. And so I'll click on that. And then it'll pop up and we'll hit run on there. You should notice that my configuration has now changed to PyCharm up here on the top. And now I have my run button. So if I ever need to run it again, I can just push this button and it'll know that that's the last one I'm working with and that's what I should run. And this will reset each time you create a new project because you're now in a new environment. That way you can do additional configuration in there. And then we're going to bring it down here and I want you to notice on the bottom it's automatically, let me just put a big arrow on here. Here it is, PyCharm. It's opened up a PyCharm and it's opened up a run tab down here. I can now easily get to the output on this. And you can see that the output of the absolute value of minus 0.7 is 0 0.7. And it says process finished and with exit code. So it's hit the end of the file and is done. And if you're looking at these tabs down here and I said it was going to come back to them. You can see there's the terminal. So if I want to put terminal commands in here, I can actually, just like as if you're in a terminal user interface, I can print hello, enter. And this is actually the terminal for, uh, this would be if you're doing something like pip pip install, that kind of thing underneath the terminal. And you can see there's the Python console, and the Python console is just uh, like this. You can type in your straight Python commands. So if you wanted to do something like that and hit enter, you'll see that print hello and it prints hello. But we're under the run. And so we've printed our, we've had it up here, this runs the script. And uh, let's say we've had a long code and we've decided that after X, and then we had X1 and X5 and new X and old X, we decide we don't want to call this X, we want to call this something different. Well, we can highlight the X, or whatever variable it is. We can right click, and this is an important thing to note, can very easily refactor. Now, refactor is a little different than just changing or renaming it. Refactor goes through your whole code and 
changes x to whatever you want it to be. And so we'll instead of call this x, we just want to call this y, and we'll refactor the y, and you'll see it changes y throughout our code. So now we've been working on our code for a while, and we imported math, but what if we wanted to import numpy as np, our numpy array? And uh, we've got our code here. We'll say that we have new array equals np dot array, one, two, three, four. And if you've done this before, you know that if you're on your computer and you've never run the numpy array before, this is an external module, numpy is. So if I go up here and I run this now, it's going to come up and say import numpy as np, module not found error. No module named numpy. So when we're looking at this, we can either go underneath the wrench for settings or under file and settings. And we talked about the appearance in here and your editor and how you can adjust all that for different looks. There is also the project and version control. So we go under version control and you can see there's a lot of different options here. But we went under the project. And under the project, there's the project interpreter. So if I wanted to work in something other than, in this case, Python 3.6, I can easily switch this. Right now I just have 3.6 installed on this setup, on this particular machine. But at some point I had 2.7 for old, older projects. And 3.7 is a new Python that just came out, which doesn't work with the number of modules. So you can easily switch what Python you're working on to see if it works with the different modules. And you'll see down here where it has the package also, and it has uh, pip and setup tools. And on the right-hand side, it has the plus. So we can add additional modules in here. And in this case, we want numpy. So we'll type in numpy at the top. And it'll come down, and you'll see uh, there's numpy, and then there's a lot of different other versions of numpy for doing special things. There's numpy turtle, numpy display, and so on. We want just the basic numpy. And so when we click on the numpy, we can now install the package, and this will copy numpy onto this environment. So this numpy is now only in this project. That way if you have another project and you don't want to have to reload all your different Python tools, you just want the ones for that specific project, you don't have to worry about that. And you can see where it pops up down here and says package numpy installed successfully. So I'll go ahead and close out of this window and now you can see I have numpy in my packages. One of the downsides of having such a robust package like PyCharm, which has all kinds of settings, as you can see there's build settings, there's languages and frameworks, there's tools, is the most basic things you need to know where they're at. And so your project setup and project interpreter are uh, one of the most important things to be able to find right away. And of course your appearance, so it appears correctly. So what's the use of having a nice IDE if you can't adjust it so it fits your needs? And we'll go ahead and click OK out of here, and then we'll come back in here to our PyCharm, and we'll go back up here and hit the run, and you'll see now process finished and we don't have an error. Now if I'm done, I can always go up here to File, I can close the project, and then we can go back up here and we can go to Open Project, or I can just exit out and go back into the software. And then we can always go under and open a file. We can either click on the icon or File and Open, and then browse for a file. Let's say I want to, I'm an overachiever, so I want to open up another project I'm working on, or just did. And I have the option of opening this up in a new window. So I can replace my PyCharm tutorial with my OOP, Object Oriented Programming, or I can open it up in a new window. And this is nice because now I have the two windows and if I'm working on, in this case, uh, you'll see classes. I can now flip between the two screens and I have two separate interfaces that I'm going through. And we'll go ahead and close this one out. And then we already talked a little bit about the configuration. I can edit these configurations. We can save the config. But let's go ahead and edit the configurations. And you can see in here it opens up our PyCharm, our PyCharm setup. And we also looked at how to get through this through settings. This is just a quick way to get to it. It's just on here with your configuration setup. And you can see here it's running the PyCharm.py. That's the um, script we've chosen. That's the name of this particular folder or this particular um, file, PyCharm.py. And you'll also see you can change your Python interpreter here, it's same as we did in these settings. And we have the 3.7. There's my 3.6 environment, 3.6 RE. So I have a lot of different options as far as which environment to choose from. And we already talked about a number of ways to run it. You can go under Run and run it from up here. There's our Run. You can click on the Run key. If you hold your key over there, you'll see that um, you can also run it using using uh, Shift F10, that will run it. And another option is you can right click on this space and also go down here to run. It's always good to have your code actually do something. So we'll come down here and do print new array. We can run it this way. And you'll see down here it prints our one, two, three, four. And let's also do a print 
goodbye, print, hello. Uh, and one of the nice things you can do with PyCharm is we can then, on this left spot here, click, and it'll add a red dot, which is a breakpoint. And this time, instead of running it, uh, we can go through either under the run, you'll see debug charm, you'll see this little bug here, we can right click it and find our picture of the bug down here and debug. If you hold your mouse over it, you'll see shift F9. So when we run this, it'll come through and it'll go ahead and it just stops here at our breakpoint. And then we end up with our variables showing what they are, the modules in PyCharm, and you get a lot of information. And so it's loaded the new array, we now have the new array in here, and if I push F F8, that will continue to run. You can also, if you hover your mouse over here, you'll see the debugger. You can also stop PyCharm where it's at. So if we hit the debugger again, it will continue. Stop and rerun cancel. If we go under run, you'll see debug also here set up the stop PyCharm. But the key is F8. And when I do F8, it goes down to the next one. So it's going to print hello. And then I hit F8 again and hit F8 again to get to the end of the program. And let's go ahead and write a short script up here. We're going to create like a uh, small matrix. It's a simple list of lists. And we'll do an input so we can get some values into it. We'll say, um, oh, let's do enter x and y. And then if we're going to have an enter, we should have x and y. And this will be an array. We'll do integer of x or x and string split comma. So what this does is we're going to generate an x and y variable here. So if I run this, it'll prompt me down here in our input. And it's looking for like 3 comma 4. Now if I run this with something that's not an integer, because we have an integer, uh, we're going to convert x, each of those to an integer. So if I put in a comma b, it'll give me a value error, because it doesn't know what to do with a comma b. Uh, and then let's go ahead and create a list, and we'll have our list equals, call it list, and then we'll have, let's see, 0, 4, column, and range y. Now if you remember from range, that's 0 up to, but not including the y value. So if you enter in 3, that 0, 1, 2. We're going to assign a 0 for each one of those, but we also want to do that for row in range x. And so what we can do here is we'll do, uh, so right now if we um, run this and we just print list, which you can do, we'll run that, enter x and y, we'll go ahead and do 3 comma 3, and you'll see it creates a list of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we want to go ahead and change that. We'll do for row in range x, and there's so many ways to do this. We could have just as easily done for value in. But we'll do it this way, for a column in range of y, and we're going to set our list of row and column equal to some other value. And we'll just do um, row times column. So we should end up with a uh, row, uh, we'll have like a 0 times 0, 0 times 1, 0 times 2, 1 times 1, 1 times 2. And we can do a print like we did before. Uh, that's one option. So we can just print list. And we'll go ahead and run that. And let me resize this window so you can see a little better what's going on down below. And we'll stick to our 3 comma 3. And you'll see that we end up with 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 4 just multiplying them. That can be really hard to read. And so a lot of times in my own code, I'll do something like this. I'll put, the, when I'm troubleshooting things, I might reformat it. Do the same kind of row and column thing for column and range of y. And then we'll just simply print, in this case, list of row of column. And if you run this, this will come out. Let me just go ahead and run this. There we go. We'll enter in. Let's do 3 comma 3. And you'll see that it puts out each value coming down 0. 0, 0, 0, and so on. These could be very complicated values. It might not just be a number. Another trick we can do, this I find myself doing regularly also, is instead of doing each individual, maybe I need to look at the row to figure out what's going on with my rows. And you can see here if I type in uh, 3 comma 3, I'll end up with each row coming across. And this is just simple manipulation of a basic list with sublists. That's all that is. Now one of the, um, especially in the data science realm, one of the most important things to start doing is to plot what you're looking at. I don't know how many times this has saved me. I'll be working on a project and something just won't look quite right on my data and my predictions. And then I plot it and I go, oh wow, that is just too perfect of a fit. And I look back at my data and I say, well, it's because I'm fitting the answer to the answer. That sounds very odd, but it does happen. You would be amazed when you get into some of the deep coding, what you can do with your predictions and your side kit. So in this case, we're just going to do a simple plot. And the simple plot is in the format of x or uh, x comma y. 
So these are all our x values. And we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4. And these are our y values. 1, 2, 3, 4. What's important to note here is, one, we're importing the matplot library, dot pyplot as plt. plt, once we put it in here, this creates a uh, basically a canvas that you're painting on. So you can plot all kinds of stuff on here, and you won't see anything until you do plt.show. And so when you do plt.show, then we'll display that graph. And let me go ahead and run that and take a look and see what that does. And of course, we have a mod module error because this is a new environment or a new project and you'll see it even highlighted it in red up here and if you remember from that we can go under settings once we're under settings and our project interpreter we see numpy up there add the plus and then we need to import matplotlibrary there's our matplotlibrary we go ahead and install this package which takes it just a moment and once it's done it appears on the bottom and says uh, package properly installed or what it actually says is installed successfully. Once you have that, we can close out of here. We can close out of our settings. You can either click OK on the bottom or you exit out. Either one is fine. And now if we go ahead and run this, and we'll start it over again since I had an error, PyCharm, it'll pop up with a nice figure, and you can see our plot there, uh, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. And when you are working with the PyPlot library, remember that you're sending, this works really good with NumPy because you can reshape it, because a lot of times you'll end up with your data 1, 1, 2, 3, and you have to reformat it to 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, your X and your Y plots. And if we're going to do NumPy and matplotlibrary, the next one is to import pandas as PD, so you have a nice data frame in PyCharm. Again, it's highlighted in red, so we need to go up here underneath our setup, our project interpreter, and up to the plus sign on the right, and let's go ahead and install pandas, and here's our pandas right at the top, so we'll go ahead and install that package, and then you have to wait just a moment for the package successfully installed. And once we see that um, successfully installed, then go ahead and close out and either OK or exit out. And we're back into our pandas. And then uh, pandas is such a wonderful data frame setup. One of the nice things about it, besides being an excellent displaying of information and data and lots of manipulation you can do, it also makes it really easy to import and export information. I actually have like a file called cars here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy the address to it. So here's our address. And if you remember, the backward slash, we either have to do double slash or change it to a forward slash. So we'll just do that really quick. This is for this video we're working on. So it's in my Simply Learn videos PyCharm. Forward slash, in this case it's cars.csv. And we're going to change this into a string so we can pull our data from here. Let's do it this way. Now, in some editors you can highlight and just do brackets. Um, I'm actually going to do a control X, type in our um, denoter for a um, string, and then just paste it right in because I'm I'm very lazy. I try to do as many, as few clicks as I can. I'll set path equal to this. Ends in the cars.csv because that's the file. And once we have that, we can go ahead and uh, df.opd.read underscore csv. We have our full path. And then we'll just print, we'll do a full print of uh, our data frame. You can do df.head.tail. There's all kinds of different tools to sort and process your data frame. And let's go ahead and run this. And you can see here it has 261 rows and eight columns that print out. And since I like to see what it looks like on the top, we'll do head, which does the first five rows. And you can see right here we have our uh, MPG cylinders, cubic inch inches, horsepower, weights per pounds, etc. All the different data pulls in on this. And it puts it in a nice readable rows and columns setup. So we covered the basics of PyCharm today. We went from the website where we downloaded it. Up here you can see from JetBrains underneath the community version which is complete open source and free to use. We went in and learned about our settings where you can set up your different modules, different ways to get into it, the different ways to run code, where to go ahead and install the modules like Pandas and NumPy that don't come as a default. Remember PyPlot and uh, Math do come as a default. No, PyPlot doesn't. Just Math comes as a default. So we learned where to install Install all these different modules from. We've run our basic code, we've shown you how to do the debugger, how to add a flag at the beginning, how to rename your variables and refactor them, so if you want to rename it all the way through, and we've walked through the basic running of the programs and the debug run. And with that, we have come to an end of this session on PyCharm. Thank you so much Richard, it was pleasure having you in the session. So if you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in the session, or if you need any resources used in the session, please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be more than happy 
to resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep coding.